recording. Uh, so, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Dr. Umar is with us, Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Again, Allah has allowed uh, us to meet, and uh, I'm here to talk to Dr. Umar about a very important topic. Uh, we're going to call this the curse of Makkah. And mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very interesting, okay, that uh, in the Quran, there are several words used for city. When Allah is talking about any city, there's several. Allah will say Medina, for example, like the Medina of, of the Prophet. Mm. But the word Qariya is used for a city that's disobedient to Allah. Mm -hmm. And the word Qariya is used in Quran almost as a permanent terminology for Makkah. Mm -hmm. So no, I, that's interesting. Yes. So uh, when you were just talking before I started recording, I, that's what clicked my mind. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I see well, we touched that, on something there. there yeah, we go. exactly. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when Quran uses, uh, you can say synonymous words or they're never really synonymous. Every word in Quran mm -hmm. has a very specific. And you have to take, for example, the word sirat, which means path, and tariq, which mm -hmm. means path, and sabil, which means mm -hmm. path, and kind of like mm -hmm. compare how they're used in different contexts in the Quran. Mm -hmm. But when you do that with different cities, they're different words, like balad is a word. Qariya is a word, but Qariya usually comes for a disobedient city. Mm -hmm. And for Mecca, it says Ummul Qura. It is the mother of all cities, number one. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mm -hmm. say the word Medina for, for Mecca mm -hmm. ever. And uh, on that note, I will mention something as a side note so that everybody is clear. The Prophet called his city Medina. But before it was called Medina, it was called Yathrib. And the, mm -hmm. the Prophet changed its name to Medina, and the Prophet said not to call it Yathrib again. But then the Prophet says, in the end of times, in the end of times, Medina will become Yathrib again. Oh dear, yeah. So it goes back to its Jahiliya form. The Prophet said, yeah. Imranul Bayt al Maqdas, the flourishing mm -hmm. of Jerusalem will mm -hmm. be Kharabul Medina, will be the destruction of, uh, sorry, will be the destruction of Yathrib. And he didn't use the word Medina, which he told everybody to use. Instead, use the word he told everyone not to use that to, in order to indicate that Medina will no longer be a good city, but mm -hmm. it will be a city that will go back to its pre-Islamic tendencies. Yes. So, but for Mecca, Quran never uses the word Medina, even though mm -hmm. the Quran does use the word Medina for Medina. Mm -hmm. But Quran does not use the word Medina for Mecca even once. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's interesting because there's another word in the Hebrew that is used to describe reprobate or disobedient men. Mm. And uh, this was used for the first time during the rendition in the Alturat of the story of Noah when it talks about the fallen angels and uh, the sons and daughters of men um, seducing the daughters, the sons and daughters of Adam, you see. Mm -hmm. So these people were called Ish, I-Y-S-H. Mm -hmm. And that means irredeemable or mm -hmm. reprobate. Their mm -hmm. case is forgotten. Mm -hmm. So whenever uh, Allah in Al Torah talks about the sons of Adam. Uh, these are the sons of obedience, it's called. And then there are the sons of disobedience. The sons of disobedience were called Ish. Mm. You see. So this is the Sunnah of Allah, you see. Mm. When he's giving the revelation, he uses certain terms to make very powerful statements, mm. you see. And since we're talking about this. Uh, uh, this um, situation, which is still presently the case with Mecca mm -hmm. in particular, the thing you mentioned was a curse. Well, yeah, there's a curse. There was a curse placed on Israel. There was a curse placed on the Holy Land or what's called the Promised Land. And mm -hmm. this is both symbolic and practical. Mm -hmm. It's symbolic in that, uh, you know, if you're going to uh, remain a son of disobedience, uh, then you are going, you're not going to reach your promised land either here or hereafter. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, the, the, the hedge around you that Allah would set up as his friend or his servant will collapse. Mm. You see, so the walls will collapse and the infidels will rush in and they will take over your possessions, your wives, your children, your mind, doesn't make any difference. This is a curse. So obedience is central here mm. to uh, lifting the curse. Now, I want to talk about this in terms that uh, we just mentioned uh, before you started this recording, because it has everything to do with obedience and disobedience. Mm. Now, we're talking about the promised land, and we're talking about the mother of cities, and we're talking about, well, Jerusalem versus Becca and uh, the Qibla and all this sort of thing. But the Qibla represents a change in apostolic authority. That's what Absolutely it represents. Absolutely 100%. That's what it Absolutely represents. Absolutely 100%. Yeah. And because, so, yeah, go on. No, no, um, I wanted to share in Sutil Bakra, this is exactly how it is. That Allah mm -hmm. starts off by describing the believers and then the beginning of man. And then it starts off a charge sheet of Bani Islam. Mm -hmm. You did this and you did a this. Charge sheet, yeah. A charge sheet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a police you know, plotter, right? <laughs> and it's almost a hundred <laughs> verses on the chart sheet. We gave you manna and salwa. We gave you, we parted the seas for you. We did this mm -hmm. and you were in this situation and you still disobeyed. And then, you know, we we uh, told you to sacrifice the cow and then you still disobeyed. And mm -hmm. after this entire chart sheet from ayah number 140, moving onwards, the issue is the change of the Qibla. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The change that's of the it. That's and so, it. Now, and, 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 and that was kind of like indication. Now it's it's you're it's trying, over. It's over. It's over. Yeah. Israel is now ish. It's reprobate, irredeemable. You see, the only Jews who are redeemable are those who become Muslim. Okay, that's very simple, straightforward. But they know this, you see. The Jews know this. Their chief rabbi in uh, Medina, he knew this. Hmm. You see, and then he converted after testing the prophet. And then what happened? The Jews threw him out. They exiled him from their fellowship. Hmm. So that's what happens. Now, this exile from fellowship is uh, something that Allah does. You see, he does hmm. to an entire people. He does to an entire race, a nation, a religion. It doesn't matter. If you're not obedient, he will give you a charge sheet and he will give you a term, and this is the sunnah of Allah. He never changes. And once that term is reached, you will be replaced by a people who are not like you. Yes. Now, some, pe some people say, okay, well, the Arabs are going to be replaced, and they're going to be replaced by, I don't know, the Chinese, who somebody who's not going to be like them. But that's not what it means. What it means is someone who's going to be obedient, mm. you see. Uh, not like you. It means you become disobedient. And mm. I'm not going to put up with disobedience either here or hereafter. Mm. In the hereafter, that's the end. That's the second death, what the Christians call the second death. That, you know, you're eternally separated from all of God's grace. Now, mm. here we have certain uh, degrees of grace here. I mean, the sun shines on everybody. and But there's favors that we receive from Allah that are different according to Allah's determination, not according to our determination. So what happened with um, the Arabs in Mecca after the prophet's um, um, wonderful success and triumph was that the Arabs remained disobedient. Mm. And this is, very, this is uh, very clear in the history. Why don't you study the history? Forget all about this business of the wonderful golden age of Islam and all these wonderful um, you know, scholars and saints. Uh, yeah, they were there. But the leadership is what the problem is, mm. not the pious men or the pious women. Mm. It's the political leadership, because you cannot separate political leadership from the religion, mm. you see. Because what? Islam is not a religion. It is both. So that makes it a way of life. It yes. is a way to walk on the earth. Mm -hmm. You see? Now, we've discussed this before. 
So what happened? Why was the curse not lifted? Well, it was about to be lifted. Everything was in order. And then the prophet had to make a decision, you see, after certain trials were made. And he was then afflicted. He was afflicted by the poison from the Jewish wife. He was afflicted by the black magic uh, from uh, a, a Jewish magi who found, uh, you know, strands of the palm tree and po probably some personal threads of his hair or something from his garment, threw it in the well. Well, yeah, the curse was broken there, but it was never completely lifted mm. because he still suffered to the, mm. the end of his days. Mm. And we know the Quran says that Allah gave him a choice. Mm. Do you want to remain? I'll heal you. If you want to come with me, come with me now. And the prophet chose to leave. Mm -hmm. Now, so the curse was not lifted. You see, this is what I'm talking about. If the curse was not lifted on the prophet, it was not lifted on the land either. Mm. Why? Because there were certain things left to be done and the Muslims did not do them. Okay. Right. And what then as soon as the prophet died, you had a whole bunch of people saying, we're the prophets. Yeah. yeah. And then you had a rebellion right within in, in the Muslim. Right, right away. After, right, right away. away. We're not giving zakat. Right. Mm -hmm. So there was a revolution, but then there was a, an immediate counter revolution. Yes. You know, now that yes. Muhammad's gone, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, maybe this is our opportunity. The to, one, the one opportunity to lift this thing, to lift the curse, was with Ali, and this was when he faced the army of Muaya, and uh, the his Ali said charge, and Ali's men refused to charge because of superstition. Mm -hmm. So this is the cause of the curse that remains on Mecca, mm -hmm. okay? Because the superstition was never lifted. Mm -hmm. The Arabs never left their superstitious mindset. They still have it. Mm -hmm. All of the Middle East is filled with this, and I've been amongst Muslims who have been affected by the emanations from the Middle East, from the Arabian Peninsula, and they're all involved in superstitious ideas, amulets, the hand of Fatima, all of this stupid nonsense. Mm. And as long as you're going to be preoccupied with that, you cannot communicate, you cannot connect, mm. you see. You cannot redeem the fullness of Salat with Allah, and then therefore you cannot be guided. Mm. And that the Muslim community is not guided is very evident. Mm. It's, been very, it's been very evident for a long, long time. Yeah. Now, if you look at the Kaaba, what is it? It's not been restored. The prophet was going to restore it. It was never restored. Now, very few people know this story. And uh, I got into a whole lot of trouble with uh, many of my students uh, about a, just over a year ago when I brought it up. Half of my students left me. All right. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that the Kaaba is sitting there, not in its original form. It's been transformed. It was transformed to a pagan building before the prophet. And the prophet had been in the process of one of his things that he had to do amongst so many umpteen thousands of things left undone, you see, was to restore the Kaaba to the form in which it was uh, built by Ibrahim. It's not a cube. It's, it's a, a cube. rectangle. Which is very interesting because... There is a Jewish writer yes. who recently said that we, the Jews, the, it, the book is called uh, Return to Mecca. Mm -hmm. And they called the Kaaba a cube, by the way. Yes. And the Jews, they wear this cubical thing on their head. I forget what it's yeah. called. Uh, and so yeah, that's, uh, yeah it, I, 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 I understand. It represents their law. But this is the law of Baal. And we'll get to Baal, yeah. hopefully, towards the end so, of this So they're discussion. trying to convert the Kaaba back yeah. into polytheistic nature. And what's so That's interesting right. about that, Dr. Umar, you'll be surprised. The prophet said this. Mm -hmm. The prophet said the day of judgment will not come till polytheism comes back to Arabia. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's there already. And uh, you can see it in this grand big hotel that they've set up right behind the Kaaba there. It's right there. The Kaaba itself is a, is a, a building that is dedicated to Satan. 
It's dedicated to Saturn. That's what the cube represents. It represents the black sun. The and, and it's also the interesting sun. that they changed the cloth from being white and red, which it was yeah. before it was black, to mm -hmm. this black cloth. Mm -hmm. You know, and this black cloth uh, is what uh, kind of like alludes to that whole cubicle black box, uh, or the, yeah. Yeah. you know, because when it was just white cloth, it didn't really represent that in its the way that it does now. With a black cloth, it, uh, it, it absorbs all colors. It absorbs all light, mm -hmm. you see. And this is uh, very sacred to the, those who practice uh, spiritualism and black magic because mm -hmm. it is protected for them. That's why these people, for like the, the Catholic priests and Jesuits, they wear the black. That's why you see the Shia mullahs, they're all dressed in black. You see, because it's an act of black magic and it protects them from uh, the illicit activities of jinn that they cannot control. Mm -hmm. So that's a, it's a means of control. And mm -hmm. that's what it is. That's why it's one of the uh, reasons that the Kaaba is dressed in black now. Mm -hmm. uh, the Kaaba is also, the windows were removed, so it's all blocked up now. Mm. Uh, and this is also in keeping with Masonic buildings. There are no women, there are no rooms in the Masonic buildings mm. and all free Masonic buildings are under the control of the Jewish auspice and the Jewish auspice is under the control of the Sabbatean covenant with Lucifer mm. and this covenant is dedicated to Saturn or the black sun. Now, let me take that a step further so that your students can understand this, your listeners can understand this, because this was the essence of the spirituality behind Hitler. Mm -hmm. The Anurbi uh, secret societies, the Thule secret societies behind Hitler were dedicated to the Black Sun, the mystery of the Black Sun. The Black Sun is the mystery of the Kabbalah. The highest mystery of the Kabbalah is the fact that the God in their eyes, both Adam as a son of God and God himself were bisexual, meaning containing both the male and the female elements, which is, this is why LGBT is so important to them in this day, <coughs> in this day and age. <coughs> Excuse me. So they're bringing back this mystery and they're that they've already dedicated uh, the Kaaba to this mystery. That's why it's Saturn. Saturn is the, the center of the black sun. It's, con it's called the black sun because the, the, the redemption of the Jewish phrase depends upon them entering into the darkest human sins in order to find the lost spark of divinity that God lost in materialism. That's according to their theology. That's mm. how mad they are, okay? Mm. These people are absolutely mad. So they've, they've, they've set a false theology together with uh, a perverted sexuality, a perverted uh, sexual content, context. And this context is the same that you find amongst the Tibetan Buddhist monks. They're trying to become the super monk. And in order to do that, they have to in, imbibe the female essence mm. so that they become bisexual metaphysically. Mm. Now, some of them actually do murder a, a Buddhist monk and then they eat her cannibalistically. Mm. So uh, and this is something that the Dalai Lama does not want to discuss, okay? Mm. And reasonably so. So um, anyway, all of these mysteries, as I've said before, are wrapped up with the mystery religion that began with Kabil's disobedience. So we come full circle here. They have enshrouded the Kaaba with this dark mystery. Mm. You see, this is the same cube that the Jewish man puts on his forehead, That's wraps right. around his arms, binds yes. himself up in this mystery. This is the tying of the knots, okay? Yes, that's what they do. The and uh, that's what they do, you see? So when they're doing this, they're dedicating themselves to Baal, all right? Now, Baal can be traced to the ancient Mesopotamian religions. It can be traced to uh, the pre-Dravidian religions, uh, according to the Freemasonic uh, book, 
uh, Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike. Yeah, that's what that's it. That's the Kaaba right there. You see, that's it. And I, I lost half my stu I lost half my students last year when I, I told this. Uh, right, told and that's an exact cube, whereas the Kaaba yeah. is supposed to be rectangular. Yeah, the, right. the Kaaba is. The original Kaaba is rectangular. The prophet is on record as having uh, uh, in his uh, mind to, to, uh, to rebuild it and to put it back, restore it to the form that it was in before. But there's one other element that we need to discuss here in order to make the uh, picture complete. And that has to do with the black stone. You see the black stone mm. is no longer the black stone. I mean, the black stone hasn't been the black stone for a thousand years or so. Uh, I forgot the, the name of the tribe that stole it. You see, the, black, the original black stone was a proper uh, uh, sort of, um, it was almost a meter tall, uh, several centimeters thick. It was a proper cornerstone. It was a meteorite, a rock that was set as a cornerstone uh, initially. It was stolen by one of the Arabic tribes, one of the pagan tribes, and it was never restored. And so, now, Dr. Immer, I want they, to, this is a Jewish book. It's called Return yeah, to Mecca, yeah, written yeah. by this rabbi, Dennis Avey. Mm -hmm. And it's a very popular book, just so you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Will Islam be defeated and terminated when the Judeo-Christian West, West conquers, con when the Judeo-West Christian West conquers Makkah and Medina. In Return mm -hmm. to Makki, Avi Lipkin reviews the biblical history of Makkah and Medina and the mm -hmm. Israelites, uh, you know, their plight in the Arabian desert for 40 years. And mm -hmm. they, they, are, they are saying that this thing that they put in their head mm -hmm. is related to the Kaaba. In this well, it, it is now, but it was not related to the original Kaaba. And if it was related to the original Kaaba, they have perverted it. Right. That's what they always do. Right. And if, they, if he's going to cite Josephus here, Josephus was a turncoat. <laughs> he was a general who lost the war to Titus, and then he married into the Flavian family, and he create, helped them to create the original Christian religion in order to save his, uh, his uh, bottom and uh, the monies of himself and his families uh, from uh, Alexandria, the richest, the two richest Jewish families in existence at the time. Uh, they joined forces with the Flavians and they perverted the entire scriptures, created a whole new, new, uh, new Testament, put through away what we call uh, the um, uh, Al-Torat and the Injil and wrote, rewrote the gospels in secret uh, mystery religion terms. That's what they did, and I explained most of that in the new book coming out in sexology. But um, because you see, all of these things are re related, and that's why I want to talk about the Black Stone a little bit further, because what they've done with the Black Stone, there's only fragments now. There's some half dozen, maybe a dozen or uh, more fragments of the original Black Stone. Now remember, this is with a big block, okay? A big block of stone has been. It's missing. They've only have fragments now and they put them in this, what looks like a, a little sort of opal, like black opal uh, sort of thing. But that, that black opal, opal is not the black stone. It only contains fragments of the black stone, mm. the, the original black stone. Right, right, right. And, no, they, it, and it, they've said it. it that's right, that's it. right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's very, very small it. pieces left of it. Yeah, very small. And somebody and else so, has the original most of it. And somewhere yeah, else. They, 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 the original is, 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 is someplace else. It's still hidden. I'm sure it's in somebody's dungeon, dungeon someplace or someone's hidden uh, castle someplace. And they probably broke it up in, and made it into gemstones, which are worn uh, by their magi, both the male and the female magi. So, and they are, they are constantly reciting spells over this stone in conjunction with the fact that now people are kissing the fragments of the stone in an oval orifice that replica, ab absolutely represents the woman's vagina. This is disgraceful. Let, this when is I very, saw that, yeah, when I yeah. saw that, I said, this is not the original Kaaba. And, and that what's was very important for, for the listeners to understand, this, this shape 
was not done by the prophet. No, not at all. This was not done not by, this is a later invention that yeah, they did. Is, all these people is, who talk about bid'ah this and bid'ah that, and this is an innovation, that's an innovation. This is, bid'ah. <laughs> this is the biggest innovation that you take the black stone, yeah, take whatever right. little pieces are left of the black rock, and then yeah. give it the shape, uh, the strangest shape that you can, even when I saw it, I was like, why is, it's like, I didn't think of it in the way because I didn't understand. But yeah. now that I think of it, it is it's, like, why would you do that? Why would you give a, the black shape a, shape? And yeah, so it's but, a woman, it's a woman's vulva. So and, they, they have put the male and the female principle together, and Muslims are circumambulating the ancient pagan ritual. That's what they're doing. And they've been doing it for a thousand years or more. And, because this thing, and they're so they're they're working along with the curse, so they elevated the curse. This I is mean, a look at that. Look at this that. is a this is a woman's vulva. That's what it is. That's what it is. Okay. Don't tell me otherwise. It was purposely done this way. No one in their right mind would do this unless they were doing something wicked and something to pervert the actual ritual meaning. All hmm. right. That would then break off the. Uh, connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm sure there's all sorts of mysteries. I mean, you have a yeah. very, uh, what do we call it, immodest, uh, a very, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's like pornography. <laughs> in yeah, that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. And I'm told that there are, uh, there's a whorehouse within a kilometer of the yeah. um, Haram. And uh, the word haram, what do, I mean, why is it used? Why, do they, why, why is the word haram used? You see, it's forbidden, right? Yeah. It's forbidden. So what, 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 do, what, what Muslim, Muslims are doing, they're practicing something that is forbidden, you see. And, and, the, and these the, are the little, little fragments you see in black yeah, that are yeah, the actual. It was, once, it was once a big block. Yeah. Now, all most of, of it is all like this wax they have or a glue yeah. that they have <laughs> holding the little, little pieces. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's inside this encased thing that looks like the female private part. And it's you have farce. the black Kaaba. You have mm. people calling it a cubicle when it's not. Mm. It's, it's mm. rectangular. And all of mm. this is to defile yeah. the holy place yeah. of Mecca. In any case, the, the, the original... And, and people won't get this unless they understand from you these occult sciences. Yeah, right? they, yeah. they, they'll just but not... They, they understand, understand, understand it from someone like myself. Or, uh, there are a few other people who understand <laughs> these things. But th this, is, this is Satan worship. That's what it is. So on one hand, they're circumambulating the symbols of Satan... And there we have the British you know, Empire. That, that really clock. is interesting. You know, you have me a little bit excited because all of these pagan gods of the past, how many of them have to do with fertility? Yeah, that's all fertility. It's all fertility. It's all, it's all the fertility. ancient mystery religions were about fertility. You see, it was a fertility cult. It is still a fertility cult. And what stands atop the mosque and what stands atop that that tower there above the clock. These are the ancient fertility symbols of the ancient fertility ritual. This is satanic. This is idol worship. That's what it is. There's yeah. no ands, ifs, or buts about it. The entire Ummah has been uh, bamboozled. And the scholars should be ashamed of themselves. Absolutely ashamed of themselves. And so we have this uh, clock tower with this yeah. moon on top. There it is. So, you know, those are the horns. Those are the, the horns, horns of Satan. The horns of there Satan. And in the star, in the center, you have the star. This is a star and crescent of the ancient fertility, right? That comes out of the ancient Hindu Valley religion of the pre-Dravidian age. We're talking eight thousand eight to ten thousand years ago. Okay. So it's almost That's, like you have the the female part there. You got the yeah, male yeah. part here symbolically. Yeah. You know, and it's, and, and, it represents a bisexual God. That's what it represents. It represents the unity of the sun and the moon. It represents the star. Uh, the sun is a star and the moon being the moon, representing the female and uh, representing the uh, male counterpart or these, the yin and the yang 
if you will, uh, the Oriental version, but even that doesn't represent it uh, correctly. What they're doing here is they're mocking the Muslims. Mm. The leaders who have constructed these things and who have protected this satanic Saturn cube. Yeah, I mean, there's no they, reason to they, keep the clock they know, tower. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly. This is a magic spell. That's what it is. And as long as you're under the magic spell, the curse cannot be lifted. Mm. Now, and what's under the curse? Nothing but fitna. Right. Nothing but fitna. Okay. So Muslims are complaining about the fitna, mm. and all the time they're bowing down to it. Mm. They're bowing down to its gods, you mm. see, and they think they're doing otherwise. That bowing down, that portion of the Salat is not what completes the Salat. Mm. It does not complete it. Salat is connection, Con and connection means guidance. Mm. If you're going to be doing this, you're connected and connect with Satan and his symbols. You cannot connect with Allah because Allah will not honor this. Mm. You say yeah. Allah will not Allah honor this. Allah, is Allah is pure and he does not accept anything but pure. That's right. They, they, so it's it's very simple, and this is another reason why you're having uh, pro pro problems with the younger generation. They want to leave Islam because they feel in their heart uh, through fitra that something's wrong. You see, and then you have people like myself and yourself coming along to try and teach the ummah what is really wrong here, and then, then the ummah wants to crucify us. Mm. You see. They want to cruise, they want to marginalize us because they don't want to admit their errors, especially the scholars, because the scholars are responsible for this. That's what it is. So these are symbols of the uh, ancient mystery religion. And uh, you have uh, the symbols all over everywhere in ancient Arabia especially of the mother goddess. That's who Allah mm. was, you see. And Allah was the consort, the primary consort of Baal, you see. And the first thing that, that the prophet did after the dust was settled, and the dust wasn't even settled after he conquered Mecca, was to destroy that temple and kill Allah's witch and whoever was with her in attendance. That's what was done. You remember that. And most people don't understand these things. Most people don't understand the principle of disobedience. They don't understand the superstition that caused Ali's mm. uh, army to disobey him. When you disobey, then your leader is falling. You see, the leader cannot lead. And the leader will not lead the disobedient. Okay, so... Uh, this, this is not a light thing that happened. For the Magi to infiltrate and bring in false doctrines, to bring in false symbols, and to bring in false rituals, you see, and to preoccupy people with ritual rather than uh, profitable applications of the reality of our connection with Allah. And that has everything to do with guidance. And this brings us back to the, the political and the theological mm. being joined together in leadership, you see. When this isn't done, then you don't have the way of Islam. You don't have the middle path. You have the kings of the earth, and the kings of the earth are considered the, um, this is the way of Cain, the way of Kabil, because the kings of the earth are pirates. Mm. You know, that's what they are. And that's who Kabil became because of the curse on him. In other words, the curse is that the earth does not cooperate with you. So you have to subsume the earth with false doctrines and you have to subsume the Ummah with false doctrines in order to steal from them. Mm. And that's what's been done. So yeah. here's the tradition of the prophet, one of them that indicates this. The Prophet mm -hmm. said, "La taqumu saatu hatta yalaqa qabailu min ummati bil mushrikin." The hour will not be established until the tribes of my ummah unite under idol 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 worshippers, which is paganism, mm -hmm. which is, and until they worship idols. 
Mm -hmm. And indeed, there would be 30 imposters. So this is indicating this is towards the end of yeah. human history as, mm -hmm. as we reach that. And so, yeah, so we are back to paganism in Arabia. That's right. That's Unfortunately, where we are. that is the case. That's right. And, and, so, and, and so here we are. We got the British clock uh, tower there. And we got the, the black stone in this very very ugly encasing that looks like i don't i mean nobody like <laughs> even it, it just makes no sense honestly right it, well it does make sense if you understand the occult aspects mm. if you don't understand the occult aspects and you want to throw them out it doesn't make any sense at all mm. Mm. you see that and that's the fact of the matter so yeah, what and we're that, dealing with no scholars that even understand that let's say if this was even innocently done let's say let's suppose because i know a lot of muslims are going to be like well oh, yeah. how can you be so sure okay let's suppose it was innocently done but uh, then okay let's suppose it was innocently done but there were no scholars out there that thought wait this does not look good for us in terms yes. of shawa. <laughs> this does not look you know yeah. there are people out there that think islam is a religion of satanism because of these things Exactly. Because and they're right. Peoples. They're correct. They're and, correct because yeah. Islam has been stolen. It's been, um, they it's been usurped by these magicians. And these magicians are the, the group that is uh, acknowledged to be a group that came out of Babylon. And not only Jews, a group of uh, Jews and Sabians and uh, other uh, descendants of what were once called the Amorite people. And there's a passage in the, the Old Testament that says the, the end will not come until the iniquity of the Amorites is full. Now, the Amorites, they were uh, the ones who established cannibalism, human sacrifice, and the fertility cult religions that ended up with Baal in uh, the, the Middle East in the Holy Land. <coughs> and there's all sorts of permutations of the same story. You have Baal and his consorts and many, many different couples. And you also have this history of the crucifixion, the death, the descent to hell, the resurrection and the ascent to heaven, all tied up with the Baal religion and the fertility cult including Isis and uh, uh, Hermes, Trigismus, and all of this sort of thing. So what we're dealing with is that the world is looking at these symbols, and many Christians don't grasp the real history, but they understand what these symbols represent. And when they see Muslims walking around the Jewish cube, <laughs> and bowing and kissing a woman's vulva, you see, and killing each other just about to do it for the privilege, mm. you see, stampeding each other, because that's what they do in their stupidity, you see, in their pious stupidity, that's what it is. Uh, Christians look at this, other people look at this, the informed Hindu looks at this and says, oh, whoa, that's, uh, that's uh, the mother goddess's vulva. That's what it is. Why are they doing? Oh, well, they are pretty stupid, aren't they? Mm. And they're, they're, that, this is idolatry. That's what it is. All right. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, if this is the first time you're hearing this. May Allah have mercy on us and mercy on you. And uh, may Allah allow you to be truly enlightened as to the status of the Ummah in the present day, because the curse has not been lifted. Mm. That's why there is fitna. That is why brother is killing brother and sister is informing on sister and children are running away from the religion because there is no connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. You've all Mecca seen has been the made picture. into this place of hedonism. Yes, that's what Mecca. it is. That's There's what it more is. shopping malls there than there. I mean, it's like... You know, <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> That's, I mean, seriously, it's just become a marketplace. That's what everything it is. Everything is about price and market and everything like that. So this yeah. is the verse oh. of the Quran, Dr. Umar, that I wanted to show you. Uh, yeah, what Allah does it say? Tad'una Baal. Do you call upon Baal, the god named Baal? And uh, I want yeah. you to relate this back to the situation in Makkah. Tad'una Baal. 
And you leave the best of the one who is the best of the creators. So you mm -hmm. worship Baal and you, and this is in Surah Al-Safat, which is interesting mm -hmm. because this particular surah talks about jinns. Yeah. Okay? And it talks about the role of the, you can say the dark forces. Yes. yes. And, uh, and, and so it's very interesting because Surah Al-Yasin is the heart of Quran. And you yes. got to the Safat that's basically talking about many of these aspects of the occults, mm -hmm. right? And so it's saying, okay, this is the one way, the heart of the Quran, and then this is the occult. And, and so, balan, do you call upon Baal, the god Baal? What does mm -hmm. Now, can you please share with us uh, what is the historical significance of this Baal, this god, uh, this uh, this type of God, this... Uh... Okay. Well, it, historically, what happens, it's, it's the and same. Then why would Quran mention this? And what is, does this have any relationship to situation in Mecca? Yes, it does, because uh, Allah was Baal's uh, consort in uh, that part of the uh, Levant. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's what it was. She was one of the representatives of the uh, the Trinitarian Godhead, and she had three sisters with her, mm -hmm. um, or two sisters with her, so there was three of them, and she was just one of the consorts of this particular uh, Baal or Moloch, and um, they're all pretty much the same. Uh, what happens is uh, is this, and Isa made it very clear in the Gospel of Barnabas. Uh, he explains it, and I wrote that little book to uh, sort of bridge the gap between Christianity and, and true Islam. That's what the Gospel of Barnabas does, because the, um, of course, the mysteries go much deeper than this, but uh, we don't have time to go into those now. Well, what happens is a prophet comes, okay, and... Um, everything's okay for a generation. And then two or three generations later, they begin to change his doctrines and somebody uh, erected, Isa said, somebody erected a statue to his father. His father was a great man who led the city into godliness, okay? Mm -hmm. And after the son died, two or three generations later, priests arose mm. and they began to hang around the statue and receive alms and then began to become ministers for this great man mm. and you keep on doing that for a couple more generations and that guy is forgotten his history is forgotten mm. his bloodline is forgotten but and he becomes a god okay mm. especially if you're not relying on uh, written histories, but relying on oral traditions. The oral traditions can be changed, mm -hmm. and they are changed. And you can just call those the hadith of other cultures or whatever the case might be. That's what happens. They're changed according to what the leaders want them to be changed. And Isa said, these are selfish men. And the Quran makes it uh, very complete, you know, very uh, clear that Kabir became one of the selfish ones, which means that there were other selfish ones you know, before Kabil, and who these selfish ones were, we don't know, okay, and I'm not going to speculate. Anyway, this selfishness has been going on for a long time, and you can say that the whole process of uh, our instruction here on earth and our trials on earth is to weed out the wheat from the chaff, from the, to weed the selfish from the selfish, okay, that's what it's all about. So you can Rest assured, dear brothers and sisters, that Mecca is under the control of the selfish ones. Mm. Okay. No doubt. And there's no doubt about that right no now. Doubt. And these are the same people pushing the vaccine. Okay. So they are as far from Allah as the East is from the West or, you know, whatever, however you want to put it. Um, they couldn't be more polar apart. Uh, 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 if possible. So what happens is that someone brings a reminder, a messenger brings a reminder, and three or four generations later, this guy has turned into a, a god. Mm. And that's what happens. 
because uh, people want to anthropomorphize Allah. Mm. You see, this is always the same mistake. It's never, it never changes. Mm. So Allah is sexless, but they give him a sex. You see, mm. you see, the, and they, and in order to solve the the the, the conundrum. Allah being uh, in the sexes, they make him both sexes and they say, well, he doesn't have any sexual desire because he's both, mm. you see? So he's complete in himself. <laughs> How convenient, you yeah. see? Yeah. And um, you see the, uh, you see a lot of these pictures with the mother and, and the child, uh, it, even here with, uh, with the God Baal and the child. Uh, this is supposed to be, um, it's a perversion of the uh, adult, the spiritually mature, redeeming the nafs. Okay, in other words, um, the whole point of guidance and connecting Salat with Allah is to redeem the child, mm. redeem the nafs. Okay, so that you're no longer a child, but you become a mature individual. Mm. Now, a mature individual is capable of making responsible decisions. Well, how many responsible decisions do you see the Uma making these days? <laughs> no, no the, the child has not been redeemed. The nafs has not been redeemed. And the thinking is not clear. The thinking of our leaders and our scholars is not clear because if it was clear, they would see what's happened to the Kaaba. And there's one more thing I want to add to this because the Kaaba was built in the rectangular form, the rectangular shape that preserves the golden ratio, the golden ratio that, that gives us the spiral, that gives us the perfect sphere of dynamic interactions between all of the universes and the material world. Mm. That's what that golden ratio represents. That's what the Kaaba was supposed to represent. And it should represent, you see, it's been destroyed. It has not been restored. And uh, may Allah have mercy on those who have uh, failed to carry out this particular responsibility. So uh, I want to share with you uh, a, yes. another point that somehow it may relate with this is that um, the Islamic sites, like the mm -hmm. house of the prophet, like the house of like different Islamic sites, the Saudi mm -hmm. government has been relentlessly, relentlessly, relentlessly removing all historical uh, remnants of our yeah. past history. Yeah. And this they're, is, uh... they're, they're doing a very good job in preserving Khaybar and preserving some of the Jewish sites. Mm -hmm. And even uh, you will find articles now coming out saying Saudi Arabia, the lost Jewish kingdom of the past. And, and, I mean, normal, like mainstream Jewish newspaper, like the Hertz came out with an article with the lost kingdoms of the Jews in Saudi Arabia. And, uh, and so the point I'm trying to, I guess, come across with is that this removal of Islamic sites, like the prophet went to this house and this was like the house of Khatija has been removed. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, that's, I think that's a big travesty. Uh, it is. And, and, and so is there a relationship between this magic and removing those Islamic sites and those historical sites, do you think? Well, I don't know if it's, it's a magical thing. Uh, the highest form of magic is mind control. And so if you, if you remove a history, that's, a, that's, a, that's an imposition of a lie. Mm. It's a, you know, if you remove the history, then you are removing the truth. And so that's the same as uh, replacing the truth with a lie because it's null, it's a, there's nothing there. Mm. Uh, or you're going, to, you're going to replace it with something else, a false history. And that's what the Bolsheviks have been doing. You see, what they do, and these are Jews, there would be no Bolshevism if there were, were not Jews. Mm -hmm. And um, Alexander Solzhenitsyn and others has, uh, have, 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 have made it very clear that the predominant portion of the Bolsheviks were Jews. Mm -hmm. Disaffected Jews, 
maybe they were not religious Jews. It doesn't make any difference. The first thing religious, non-religious Jews do is kill religious Jews. That's what they do. <laughs> so they're Jews nonetheless, because their religion of atheism uh, is not exactly atheism. They do have a God and their God is Lucifer. They call him the enlightenment. That's what happened. That's what the, the... so when they remove the history, they're removing the truth and they're going to replace it with a false theology, mm -hmm. with a false stream. That's what the Jesuits did, you see. The Jesuits were f f founded by Murano Jews. And these were Jews who were conversos. Some of them were conversos. Some of them were um, uh, 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 people pretending to be uh, Christians for an awful long time. Mm -hmm. But they founded the Jesuits in order to protect their own families the elitist families who actually practiced the Sabbatean, uh, what became the Sabbatean uh, black magic and have, having everything to do with this black sun of Saturn business uh, mm. that focused, that was the focus of Hitler. And they called Hitler a Nazi, you see. Well, mm. the high priest in the Jewish Kabbalah is the Nazi, mm. N-A-S-I, you see. So they just changed one letter. <laughs> <coughs> Well, I'm not seeing. So, so is there a relationship between the Black Pope and uh, and uh, the Black Sun? Like, are these things are interrelated, or they're not? Yeah, yeah, they are. But I was just trying to explain to you that the Je the Jews, the Jesuits, were founded by Jews, elitist Jews, mm, and right. then they made it impossible for Jews who were not of their elitist families to join or become a Jesuit. You see, then they 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 pulled out the whole thing of the Inquisition. It was under their control. Mm -hmm. And they did the same thing in Nazi Germany. They persecuted the Jews. The Jews persecuted the Jews. They used the Germans to do it. You see, that's what they do. They're always like this. They use anti-Semitism to advance their own goal. And their 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 goal is perfect selfishness. They want to perfect selfishness, and Satan has them uh, convinced that they will rule with him in hell in a new kingdom uh, as the perfect, the perfect man, the perfect uh, selfish one, you see. And he, this is the one who has all the attributes of the false noble. This mm. is the one who, who kills without remorse. Mm. Well, you can have a righteous man who kills without remorse, but these people kill everyone without remorse. <laughs> they don't care who they kill. Uh, the righteous man all, uh, tries his best uh, only to kill who deserves to be killed. And, and now you've got people out there who say, oh, thou shalt not kill. Well, that's not true. That's not it. The, 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 the rule is don't, com don't commit unjustified homicide. Mm. You know, if you want to put it in terms of adab, in scientific oh, terms, right, right. Unjust, unjustified homicide. Right. There is justifiable homicide, mm. and people now shine, shine away from that. And then, who's done that? The Jews have to protect themselves. Well, we, we can't kill them now, you see. It's, un, it's not legal, <laughs> even though they deserve death. When you take somebody like um, uh, the, the, the COVID king right now, and, uh, you know, this man deserves to be hung. Mm. or at least tarred and feathered and run out of town like they used to do in 19th century Western towns in America, I was saying. Uh, but they, we can't do that anymore because liberal Jews have taken over everything and they've erased the history. They've erased the memory. They're now erasing monuments that people have made to order to maintain the memories. So um, this is part and parcel of what uh, the, the Rockefeller institutions and the, 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 the other people that are across the sea, the, the, the Rothschilds and those groups, uh, uh, they have organized education and historical societies to forbid conspiracy theories. They won't publish those books. Mm. And, when, and, and if they are, do manage to get past their editors, they buy them all up or destroy them like they did with Honor Toynbee, or not Toynbee said, the other fellow's book. There were <clears throat> several books that they bought all up and took off the shelves mm. that, that, that were actually published exposing, exposing them. 
The American Historical Society was founded by Freemasons, so the Skull and Bones in particular, to mm. erase American history and rewrite it mm. in terms that uh, make them look good. Mm. That's what they're doing. I just watched a, a film that uh, called the Queen of um, the Queen of the Desert, which um, talks about a lady by the name of Belle, who was uh, uh, Lawrence of Arabia's handler. She was assigned to handle Lawrence of Arabia and have him unite the Arabs unknowingly, uh, 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 unaware that the British government was going to destroy and then separate. Arabia and divide it between themselves, the Russians and the, the, the French, mm. you see, which is, you know, and that, you know, Jordan never existed until this happened. But right. this this history in this movie is completely rewritten. They, they don't raise any of these issues and they make this lady look like she really was some queen of the desert, you see. Mm. So they're lying all the time. They lie through their teeth and then People, your students who don't read history, who don't get the real history in school, watch these movies and they say, oh, 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 look how wonderfully she was treated by the Arab chiefs. She must have been an astounding woman, you see. Well, she was, but she was working for the enemy of Islam, <laughs> you see. And she was instrumental in bringing down the last of the Ottoman Empire. Not that they needed to stand, but there was some justice left in the Ottoman throne, some, some righteousness. I mean, we know that uh, uh, the, the people from Libya were, were there and uh, were trying to get through. I've forgotten his name now, but, uh, and the Freemasons, the Jewish Freemasons under Ataturk would not permit the Sultan to be addressed by anyone who had the true history, who had the true motivations, who had the righteous conception of what was geopolitically really taking place, mm. you see. So um, uh, I've forgotten, oh, the Grand Sanusi, that's who he was from Libya. This is Omar Mukhtar Sheikh, mm. okay. And uh, the Grand Sanusi died, I think later is, uh, guess someplace in the Middle East, in Jerusalem or Jordan, I've forgotten where. But the point is they change the history, they erase the history, and that's what they're doing to Islam. And your Muslim leaders and scholars are letting them do it. Yeah, and they're doing it under the idea that if we preserve these Islamic sites, then somebody will start worshiping Prophet Muhammad. And so that's the reason to get rid of it. <laughs> Yeah, well, there are people who kind of worship him, and we know the Shia worship his family. Uh, so uh, this is idolatry, and the idolatry crept in through the Brethren of Purity um, uh, relatively soon, two or three hundred years after uh, the Prophet. Of course, the groundwork was already there. The division was already there. The Oman never unified. The Quaresh won the battle. Uh, that uh, the prophet had uh, succeeded in overtaking. They, re they regained the throne within one generation of his death. So what's that tell you? Now, I never hear any of the Alim talk about this. Mm. Never, never. They, 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 they just avoid it as if it's the plague, you see. Well, this brings us back full, per full circle to the curse because the curse was supposed to be lifted with the lifting of idolatry mm. and the erasure of idolatry. And this is what the prophet did when he entered Mecca. He destroyed all of the idols, okay? He destroyed the temple of Allah and he killed their servants. These, those who were dedicated to this witchcraft, that's what it is. And what happened after that was an incomplete restoration of the kingdom. Isa said the kingdom is at hand. And he told the Jews, he told his disciples, wait for the trusted one, wait for Ahmad. Right. Everyone knew, everyone knew this, all right? That's why Khadijah and people of her particular uh, sect, Christian sect, 
understood who the prophet was because they had the prophecies, they had the doctrines that were given by Isa to the people in the Levant. And they were, they were pure and they had been maintained for those four or 500 years. Okay. Yeah, and and, we, and in, in that point of yours, I want to share with you this uh, yeah. few points on that point when the prophet had broken the idols. The prophet uh -huh. entered Mecca on that day. There were 360 idols around the Kaaba. The mm -hmm. prophet started to strike them with a stick. Basically, the prophet didn't smash them, but he broke like, let's say, the no, like some major yeah. part of the sure. uh, idol, and that was now considered it's mm -hmm. done. And so the prophet entered Mecca on the day of conquest. There were 360 idols around the Kaaba. The prophet started striking them with a stick. And so he's mm. dropping them down and then they crash into pieces mm -hmm. and yeah. with his staff and he had in his hand and he was saying, ja al -haq, the truth has come was a haq al -batil, and ba falsehood is vanished. And, uh, and then uh, the other event that I wanted to narrate to you that, that happened at the same time mm -hmm. uh, uh, is a story of his nephew, Ali. Oh, okay. The Messenger of Allah addressed on the day. Uh, no, I'll just tell you the event. You can find it. Um, where the Prophet told his uh, nephew uh, that go break such and such, the big idols, he sent mm -hmm. Ali to break them. Lat and Uzza, mm -hmm. these big idols. And then he came back to the Prophet and the Prophet said, and he told the Prophet, I broke you know, the idols. Mm -hmm. And the prophet said, what did you see? And he said, I didn't see anything. And the prophet said, go back. Mm -hmm. And he went back and he saw like this monstrous thing, like a jinn, like some mm -hmm. devil in that place where the idol was. Yeah. And yeah. then Ali radiallahu anh killed that uh, being, that jinn, or that devil, mm -hmm. or that shaitan that was mm -hmm. there. And this is an authentic narration. I just wasn't able to find it right now. But the prophet was breaking the idols. He sent out Ali to break the main ones. Mm -hmm. And and then he broke them, the physical thing. Yeah. And the prophet says, no, you haven't killed it yet. Go back and kill. And then mm -hmm. he says mm -hmm. he saw this like black thing come out. And mm -hmm. then he like, killed that. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. The point being that there's a connection. It's not just about that they're worshiping this idol, right? There's a whole system and a whole... Yeah, there's, there's, there's a, whole a connection. With, that, yeah. If, if you don't stop the idolatry, instead of connecting with the Allah, you're going to connect with the reprobate jinn. That's what happens. And then the jinn are going to give you all these signs and wonders, and you're going to think that, uh, hey, this is spirit, true spirituality. Well, mm -hmm. it is spirituality. It's uh, influences from other dimensions, but it's not the authentic connection that we need with Allah that's called guidance. Mm -hmm. right? There's no protection in it. There's no refuge in it. There's nothing but fitna in it. And wherever you see superstition, wherever you see idolatry and superstition, you're going to see poverty and fitna. That's what you're going to see. That's what so it is. Instead of going to Mecca and coming back spiritually elevated, there will be many people that are going to go to Mecca and be affected by this magic. Well, that's true. There are others who have pure intent. So Allah judges us according to our pure intent. If your pure intention is to go there and to worship Allah with uh, a, 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 a degree of knowing, now we talked about this knowing and knowledge, you see, before. There are people who go there and they're not affected at all by this idolatry. Maybe they observe it, maybe they uh, uh, circumvent it, uh, maybe they rise above it, whatever the case might be, but their intention is to pay honor to all of the prophets, not just to Muhammad, but to all the messengers of Allah and all of his people and all of his angels and all that Allah has given us in this earth, you see, in commandment, they're trying to be obedient, you see, even in the midst of all of this stupid uh, foolishness, they're still, and these people will not be affected, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, it may be, you know, they, they, there may be a case where they go and they, you know, I'm, I'm sure there have been righteous men and women who've walked up to that thing they call the black stone and said, no, I'm not going to kiss that. 
mm. and just walked away. I'm sure there had been. I mm. would have been amongst them. Mm. Had I never seen that picture and had I circumambulated and then come close to the black stone, I never would have kissed that thing because I would have recognized it for what it was right away because I'm informed, mm. you see. But there are other people who would not listen to their feature. And, you know, when you perform something like that, your intention might be right, but the actual performance of this is a ritual that's dedicated to the other side. It's dedicated to the enemies of Allah. And that puts you in contact with them. It does not put you in contact with Allah. Mm. And that's the whole purpose of the, uh, the term solat. It means contact. I've just been informed about this by one of my students. So uh, the whole point of, uh, of Solat is to contact and maintain contact. Saint, uh, Saint, the saints of Isa, the apostles of Isa said to pray constantly. <coughs> that means to be constantly in contact mm. with Allah. Okay. This doesn't mean to go around reciting Dikir all the time. This means to be, to go around and always be ready to perform the good deed for the glory of Allah. Mm. I mean, if you're busy reciting the care, how are you going to be, pay attention to what's, what's really uh, necessary in the immediate environment? Because your mind is already preoccupied. You see, that's a, that's a pagan thing. It's, it's a pagan thing. Your mind's preoccupied with something else to the exclusion of what's actually taking place in the immediate vicinity. So somebody could be in dire need of something and, you know, you've got the excuse, I'm, you know, performing dick here, I can't help you. I'm sorry, dear, I can't help you with the kids, I've got to go, you know, I've got to go pray with the boys. Well, that's like, you know, that's like the guy coming home from work and saying, well, I'm coming home late today, darling, I'm going to stop and have a few beers with the boys. There's no difference. It's just an excuse. It's an excuse to pretend to be manly. <laughs> so people who are doing these rituals uh, without the real intention, without the real contact with Allah, they're, they're not performing the religion. They're not meeting the deen. They're not fulfilling the deen. You know, so the deen is, 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 it's abandoned. And so, you know, that's, you, you look around and you look at all of the tragedies in all of these families that you, you, you're surrounded by uh, in the Muslim community, and not just the Muslim communities. I mean, I just had a guy sit here yesterday, a Christian, and he said, oh, my son-in-law, uh, my, my grandchildren just told my wife that, uh, that his papa's sticking a needle in his arm in the bathroom. But, you know, this is not uh, the dean. This is, this is not, uh, and this, the guy goes to church every Sunday, okay? So, it's not just an Islamic thing. It's not just a Muslim problem. It's a worldwide pro problem, this idolatry. That's what it is. What happens when you are not connected with Allah, you cannot fulfill your purpose. And if you cannot fulfill your purpose, you cannot be satisfied. There's no asakina. You don't know what you're supposed to do or who you're supposed to do it with or be with. You see, and then people are entering in to this relationship between you, like, you know, between you and God, even your parents and say, no, you can't marry that one. No, you can't marry this one. No, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. that, 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 that. And before you know it, you're being run by a bunch of priests who say they represent God and they're performing idolatry all the time and not knowing it. So, and they're involved in all this fitna. So that, you know, this is a, this is a broken record. There's no sphere of dynamic activity between the universes here. There's no eternity meeting the moment and no moment meeting eternity. Uh -huh. yeah. This poetry is lost, you see. The heart, the heart is lost in all this. The heart becomes sick. Mm. And uh, if the heart is sick, the whole body is darkened, you see. And if the body is darkened, uh, you know, how, how can you shed light? How, what, what, what good is your, what, what, what good is your dhapa, you see? How, how can you represent the king? Mm. And who is the king? Allah. 
unless the king, there is no other, you see. So this is a real serious problem, this darkness. And this darkness is represented by the black cloak over the Kaaba. Mm. That's what it's represented by. This is the cube of Saturn that we're talking about here. This is disobedience. This breaks the contract. This breaks the covenant never fulfills it so that the divine order that was supposed to be brought to the promised land was never really established. I mean, it was during the prophet's life for that brief moment. Yeah, I think for until the, the time of Umar and Khattab, and then after that, it was a downhill after that. Yeah, so basically yeah. a few years after the prophet. But even then, they, they ran into the whole zakat issue and false prophets so they were dealing with that and then a few years of Omar seemed to have been moving in the right direction but then after that you know we know what happened in history yeah well if that was the best generation what are we <laughs> you see if that was the best what are we so i think people need to take stock of the reality get to the prayer carpet repent and ask for real contact instead of all this false nonsense. Mm. Let's get to the truths of the very matters of, of things that matter. We need to get to the truth of things that really matter. Mm. And on that note, uh, I think we should end here, dear brother. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much for your time. It was a really great program today, inshallah. You're most welcome, dear brother.